Let's go back to that phrase, some live to eat, while others eat to live. But then, there's some that live and eat for an even higher purpose. The way Swamitri emphasizes the shlok, the way he approaches his meals, the way he focuses on others, Swamitri is different. Om Sahanao Bunaktu. Swamitri never eats alone. If not surrounded by Santo and Haribokto, Swamishri is always eating with Maharaj and Swami. The more we learn about Swamishri's relationship with food and his way of eating, the more we understand that with Swamishri, food, it's just an afterthought. We would now like to request Puja Bhakti Radhan Swami to elaborate more on this. Shri Swami Narayan Bhagavan Nijay Akshar Purushottam Maharaj Nijay Gunatitanand Swami Maharaj Nijay Bhagat Ji Maharaj Nijay Shastri Ji Maharaj Nijay Yogi Ji Maharaj Nijay Pramukh Swami Maharaj Nijay Mahant Swami Maharaj Nijay Pramukh Swami Maharaj Shatabdi Mahotsav Nijay Akshar Dham Mahotsav Nijay Food is a basic necessity. Beyond the means for survival, Food also has great cultural importance in every society. Science has influenced food culture by allowing us to look at food increasingly less in the context of basic survival and increasingly more in the context of convenience, improved health, pleasure, and joy. Food is no less culturally significant in our sampraday. Maharaj himself lovingly served the Paramhansa and Bhakto of his time hundreds of times. He also encouraged them to perform fast to earn Rajipo. And most importantly, he spoke profusely on the need to overcome attachment to food so that it doesn't hinder our spiritual progress. In this series, Brahmana Sangye, we have examined the daily life of Mahan Swami Maharaj. We have seen how, despite having accepted a human anatomy and physiology that closely resembles our own. Swamishi's life represents a transcendent existence, one that is completely free of Mayak ignorance. In today's Sabha, we will recall anecdotes from Swamishi's life regarding his partaking of food. We will see how, while doing something so innately human, Swamishi is so uniquely divine. In the process, we may also find personally relevant inspirations that allow us to progress spiritually without hindrance from our relationship with food. Let's begin with Swami Shri's inclination for devout prarthna prior to eating. In Satsang Diksha Shlok 83, Swami says, Ucharya prarthanam bhaktya tata prasaditam jamet. After devoutly reciting prayers, eat the prasadi meal. At some point in our satsang lives, we may have taken a niyam to sing Srimad Sadgurn prior to our meals. Many of us may even be doing this quite regularly today, and we should, because Swami Sri takes this customary act of devotion very seriously. June 2018, Swami Sri was in Limri. Swami Sri sat down to eat, the santo sitting in front of him began to sing shloks as is custom at the beginning of Swami Shri's meals. During this time, a Brahmin brought Swami Shri a special food item that he had made for him. Swami Shri asked his name and his native village. And by the time he had heard the man's entire introduction, the santo seated in front of him finished singing both shloks. Now without saying a word to anyone, Swami Shri proceeded to close his eyes and he sang both shloks just by himself while everyone else looked on. In 2018, while Swami Shri was in Australia, one son would often begin the singing, setting the pitch and tempo at which the shlok would be sung by everyone else. Swami felt that he was rushing. And so Swami asked him one day, why are you rushing? Shastriji Maharaj has written such a beautiful shlok describing Maharaj. What is the need for rushing through it? You did this yesterday as well. Why do you sing so fast? The Sant was a little bit 
uh, afraid, he said humbly, Swami, I thought I would help you save some time. Swami said, in the whole day, you saved what? Three, four minutes? For what? And so it's not just that we should remember Maharaj and Swami prior to our meal, but that we should do so while singing the shlok in a manner that honors the shlok and the tradition. Let's learn from Swami Sri how it should be done. Srimad Sadguna Shalinam Chida Chidi Vyaptam Chadi Vyakrutim Chive Saksara Mukta Koti Sukadam Naikavata Radipam Glayam Se Purushottamam Munivarai Vedadi Kirtyam Vibhom Tanmulakshare Yuktam Eva Sahaja Nandam Chavan Desada Om Sahanao Bhavattu Sahanao Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karvavai Tejasvinavadi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahe Om Shanti 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 Maharaj Swami Yogi Apa Navichara Yogi Apa Jayate Jamba Besta Remembering the pragat form of Bhagwan as we have experienced, this drastically reduces any karmic consequences that are otherwise natural to an activity like eating. This is not a difficult habit to cultivate, but it can have many, many benefits. Benefits such as self-awareness that can lead to greater levels of self-control. Swami Shri has shown incredible levels of self-control with his eating habits. In fact, Swami Shri has had, he's never had a time where he ate a little too much because the food was made so well. Never. We know this because Swami has actually answered this question when Santo asked him. Swami Shri's self-control has manifested in many different ways. On May 14, 2018, Swami Shri was in transit from Bangalore to Chennai, and he was having breakfast. Shri Prakash Swami said, Swami, yesterday, you chewed on one piece of paneer 282 times. Even Swami Shri was surprised and amused as he noted, I only had half a piece. And the santo all at once exclaimed, and still, Swami Shri laughed and said, don't count anymore, otherwise, you'll all lose patience. June 25th, 2019, in Amdavad, after lunch, Swami Shri went to the restroom. Vinay Priya Swami asked, Swami, did you taste some sand or dirt in the broccoli? It turns out that while Swami was eating, Vinay Priya Swami could hear a faint abrasive sound that was coming from Swami while he was chewing. He had taken the remaining shock out of Swami Shri's butter and put it to the side. He was asking now to confirm the doubt that he had earlier. And Swami Shri said, I felt it between my teeth in almost every bite. And Vinay Priya Swami was deeply hurt by this fact. And he said, Swami, why didn't you say something? I would have removed it right from the beginning. And Swami Shri remained silent as if to say, what need is there to say something or say anything in that moment? It's amazing how much self-control Swami has. It's amazing to think how many spiritual qualities we can derive from the story of Swami Shri and food. On June 27, 2017 in Atlanta, the Santo were discussing how Swami Shri begins his breakfast by eating mamra. So Swami Shri explained this in a little more detail. He said, when I was young, I used to enjoy eating patar vilya. In fact, I could eat some 40 odd pieces in one sitting. And once, while I was a parshad, I went to Nariyat, and Patar Velia were being served. 
And as a person who is serving approached me with the patarvelia, Yogi Bapa stopped him. He told him to not give me any patarvelia because I didn't like them. He told the server that I liked mamra, and so that they should serve me mamra instead. And so from then, I enjoy eating mamra. I used to like patarvelia, but I don't eat them. And this is an iconic prasad of Manswai Maharaj's Guru Bhakti. Not only did Swami Shri not try to correct Yogi Baba in that moment, but Swami Shri completely gave up eating an item of food he enjoyed for almost 60 years on a passing comment by his Guru. One that could have easily been interpreted, interpreted or conveniently interpreted as a simple error. This prasan is worthy of a lifetime of manan and nididyas. Divya bhav, nirdosh buddhi, agina, ruchi, anuvritti, sadhana, sararta, drad priti, all stemming from a moment of mindful faith in his Guru's words. Manswai Maharaj has cultivated a lifetime of moments like this in all aspects of life, turning worldly objects and actions into means of progressing his sadhana. Let's look further into how Swami Shri has made food and the act of eating a sort of practice ground for advanced level spirituality. In 2017, while Swami Shri was in Amdad, in an effort to encourage him to eat more, Pujavik Sagar Swami said, Yogi Bapa said he liked Sukhi Bhaji and Puran Puri. Swami, what do you like to eat? And Manswai Maharaj replied, I've never thought about that. <laughs> Vivek Sagar Swami continued, that doesn't have to be thought about. You should just know. And so Swami Sri replied, I don't consult my tongue. I only consult my stomach when I eat. Once in London, after Swami Sri had lunch, the santo surrounded Swami and asked Swami Sri what he enjoyed eating. The santo asked over and over, but they couldn't get an answer from Swami Sri. And so then the santo rephrased their question. They said, Swami, of course you don't care for taste, but from when you were a young child, there must have been something that you enjoyed eating. And so Swami Shri realized the love with which the santo were asking. And so after a significant amount of time, um, he thought about it and just to satisfy them, he said, Bhakri. Swami Shri cares so little to think or talk about what tastes good. To get a better idea of this, let's take a look at uh, Swami Shri answering a question very recently about what he liked to eat when he was young. Bapone Darbat Rotli Shak Savare the Agla Disnu Ratnu Savare Dudane Taju Dud Bes Dudu Besay Rotli Charpach Rotli Dawai Dudu Purpilo Although we know from his family members that Swami Shri used to eat rotli when he was young in a special way by putting ghee and sugar on it, uh, he didn't talk about it until he was specifically prompted. Let's hear Prasanna Goswami telling us about that. Swamishi 
Sami has always known the difference between what tastes good and bad. By choice, he trivializes taste. While Swami Shri was in Dar es Salaam in 2019, after Sabha, he was resting in his room. When a Sevak Sant asked, Swami, don't you ever feel like eating something tasty? The Swami Shri calmly replied, Petrol na kye che. I'm just putting in fuel. Pujya Priyavrat Swami has once said that at least since 1985, when he got Diksha, Swami Shri has been. Eating pretty much the same bland and boiled food. And what's amazing is that despite setting such a high personal standard, there is no personal bitterness that comes from this. Swami Shri lovingly serves Santo and Hari Bhakto all the time. Once Swami Shri was in Tita, and Swami would give、uh, prasadi to all the Santo in the form of sweets. And Pujang Nanpriya Swami asked Man Sai Maharaj, Is Swami, you feed us with food like this? And yet, you eat the blandest food. Don't you ever wish to eat what we all eat? And Swami said, Swami Shri said very plainly, I never desire to eat what others eat, nor do I ever feel any jealousy towards them for eating what they are eating. Once in Mumbai, Man Sai Maharaj wanted to give Pujya Anand Priya Swami some lardus. This was a long time ago in his patter. And Anand Priya Swami began to say, No, please, Swami. And Man Sai Maharaj threatened him, I'm giving you lardus. You should eat them. Otherwise, you will be forced to eat these boiled p a r v a r And so Anand Priya Swami、uh, succumbed. He said, You know, Swami, no, no, please go ahead, give me the lardus. That's much better than those boiled p a r v a r Man Swami Maharaj's prasadi is a type of prasadi that everyone wants to eat because of the maima, but never because of the taste. While Swami Shri was in Rajkot in 2019, An older sadhu from Yogi Baba's time once commented that Swami hasn't eaten anything in 40 years, meaning he's eaten so plainly and he's eaten so little. He said Yogi Baba used to serve Man Swami Maharaj and Pramukh Swami Maharaj by putting three or four ladus in their patta. But after Yogi Baba passed, neither has eaten like that. Yogi Baba was the same way, always serving others, but never himself wanting to eat. This is a comment, or this is a feeling shared by many people who have seen Man Sai Maharaj through decades of his life as a sadhu. Let's hear Swami Shri share a smriti of Yogi Bapa serving him. Gana se Yogi Bapa na. Yogi Bapa jamare toj. Baki putani mere samanya ji hoy. बनतु है तो योगी आप है एक बार अडार पूर्व पूरी पट्टी साइज़ थी अल्लाह आरना तब्बा था अने एक पूर्ण पूरी स्वाइ बाबा पाचर हंताड़ी ने लाया अने आई ने पट्टन मुकी दी ये हमें आप पानो आप ही था आप आप ही होते तो कोई वादा ना पन आवी लीला करते ऐसा मरे मैं बीजा तेत्रिस गुलाब जामुन योगी आप जमारे मैं बीजे चले तो योग पा योग पा तो तो आपको थार भरे जले मट्टी मट्टी जले ये थी पचास श्रीखंड जमा रावजी भाई ना श्रीखंड लठ्ठो एम चार घणु बीजा चार श्रीखंड थे बेन्च आठ इंच सेकंड नॉर्मल सेकंड बने आप जमी से तो नंदा साहेब सामने बैठेला उन्हें ईश्वरचंद साई ने हो मन ने योगी आप सेकंड आप ढकलो सीधो डायरेक्ट 
Kravati Bhaina Shekhar, and I looked through Jarayana, and Nanda Sahib Sahib, Kodri Jama. I am the fellow near by two. Dukara Parello, at the Mada Lalba Dushastina, Nanda Zina, Evada, Mutara, Minister, Kodri Jumta. They saw me better of Kodri and a Yogi of the Rotor Second Pirisio. I remember which are Kri, Yogi of an Arab. Research and so in a woman, which are Kri, Nanda, Kudri Kaisa, and a second lot of branch. But he Jamira Nanda Sahib to Gaya. But he, I mean, Yogi of an up with you, Kibaba, how when you Nanda Sahib. Kira Gunayo, I said, so I came now. I mean, Kailo and Kona Bapni Gujarat. Kailo, Kona Bapni Gujarat. I mean, Javani, I said, Jamil, but he quite Piris Naroni, you give up. But he promoks on me, promoks on me, I mean, Jamarat. Two thousand seventeen Amdavat, Swamishi had just finished Jesta and was returning from the restroom. As Swamishi sat upon his bed, a sadhu asked him, While you eat, every so often you close your eyes briefly. Are you doing dhyan in those moments? And Swamishi said, No, I do smriti of Yogi Baba. Moments of smriti. Swami is always looking for these times, these, these small moments where he can remember Yogi Bapa in between bites. Mansai Maharaj once described how Yogi Bapa would end up talking most of the time while he was eating breakfast to the Hari Bhakta who were sitting across from him. And so they noticed that Swami wasn't eating enough, so they asked the Hari Bhakta not to come so that Bapa wouldn't be distracted. And Yogi Bapa ate just as little when no one was sitting in front of him. And Mansai Maharaj made this point. He just liked being with Hari Bhakta and talking to them. And Swami Shri is the same. Shlok 176 in Satsang Diksha says, Militva bhojanam karyam gruhaste svagruhe muda. Householders should joyously eat meals together at home. In recent decades, the size of satsang has made it very difficult for the satpurush to do what he normally used to do, having Hari Bhakta and Santo eat with him. But we see Swami, despite the challenges we have today, he still finds his way to make this happen. In 2017, Pansai Maharaj's morning routine started early in the day here in North America. And so the Pujya Santo would be him all the way until he went for his rest after 9 a.m. And Swami Shri felt that this was way too late for them to then go to breakfast. And so he asked for arrangements to be made so that the santo could eat breakfast with him. In Australia, 2018, Swamishi gave santo enough prasad every day so that they didn't even have to eat breakfast sometimes. That same year, he would drink less carrot juice so that he could give some in prasad every day. The sevaks realized this, so they started making a second glass just so that he could give the glass of carrot juice as prasad to someone. Swami nourishes sump every chance he gets. And he often sets the bar really high. In 2018, while in Rajkot, during breakfast, he gave a glass of carrot juice to one son. And then he started to laugh subtly as, as he handed over the glass. And so his Selak son asked, Swami, why are you laughing? And so Swami explained what he was thinking. He asked, what is sump? If I give the carrot juice to one person and he gives one spoon each to 10 people, is that sump? or if he drinks it himself. And then Swami Shri clarified, if he drinks it and others are happy that Maharaj and Swami drank through him, that is Samp. The spiritually inclined approach pleasure from worldly objects with suspicion and mistrust. Swami cares about Samp, Swami cares about togetherness, but he doesn't care about food. 
Some of express these feelings towards food that we might otherwise associate with happiness. Take ice cream, for example. May 31st, 2017, um, Sami was in Saranpur, and Hari Bhakto had given or they'd sponsored an ice cream rasway for Thakurji. And so the Santo brought a bowl for Swami Shri to make prasadi. So Swami placed a flower petal on the, bowl, on the ice cream and he made it prasadi that way. So the Santo urged Man Swami Maharaj, Swami, please have a little. And Swami Shri said succinctly, nah. The Sevak Sant filled half a small spoon. Still, Swami said, nah. So the Santo offered just enough ice cream to touch the spoon. And they urged Swami, Swami, please, just this much. Swami Shri said, Kadu lagese. <laughs> it tastes bitter to me. Now everyone laughed because just a week earlier, while he was about to go to sleep, Swami Shri had said, Ke no matter how bitter, how kadu any medicine is, it all tastes the same to him. He had said that. But here he was, just to avoid eating ice cream, he was complaining about it tasting bitter. So what does Swami really think about food itself? December 25th, 2017, Mesana. Swami Shi had just met 1044 Hari Bhakto during the Mulakat session. And at 12.10 in the afternoon, he arrived in the dining room to have lunch as usual. And as usual, he yawned slightly prior to eating. The Santo commented, Swami, you seem exhausted from the Mulakat session. And Swami Shi replied, what exhaustion? I'm exhausted from having to eat. <laughs> Swami Shi wasn't tired of meeting people even after 1,044 Hari Bhakto had come through. But he was tired from having to sit down and have his meal. December 31st, 2017, Swami was in Himmatnagar. He arrived in his room to have dinner. And the shlokgan finished and Swami Shri said, Khawani matha kurche. And then he began to eat a little bit. In January 27, January 7, 2018, Swami was in Surat. And while eating dinner, he said to his Sevak Sant, I'm not even hungry, but all these santo are sitting here just to make them happy. The Sat Purush wants to make us happy. His engagement with worldly objects on a whole is for our benefit. This is so apparent when we study Swami Shri's eating habits. So what does Swami Shri really like? Swami Shri likes Gurn Grahan. September 22nd, 2016, Sarangpur, after his breakfast, Every day, Swami Shri would get an introduction to a few of the new sadhus in the training center in the form of their gungrahan or positive characteristics being told to Swami Baba. And after today's session, the santo asked Swami, Swami, do you enjoy these sant introductions? And Swami made a gesture with his hands to express um, his enjoyment. He said, Khub maja And then he said, hearing these introductions, is so enjoyable that the act of eating feels like a complete bother. December 20th, 2017, in Surindanagar, after his breakfast, Swami Shri asked for his real nourishment, Gurn Grahan. A Sevak Sant explained, Swami, we've completed the Gurn Grahan session for all of the Santo in this mandir. There's nobody left. And so then Swami Shri stood up, but as he was walking, he expressed disappointment. And he said, Aju, fast put I had to fast today. And so the Sevak son said, Swami, we won't let you, we won't make you have to do an upvas. We'll, we'll take care of it. And so they called a few sadhaks that had come. Two sadhaks had come and they were standing nearby and they'd performed a special vrat. And they were able to break their fast with prasad from Swami Shri. And so during that time, the santo told Swami Shri about their good qualities and made Swami happy. August 8, 2019, Swami Shri was in Gandhinagar. After lunch, Swami Shri was speaking to the nearby Santo and Hari Bhakto. And he said, very seriously, Gungan Gava, Ema Khati Jau, Biju Baddu Nakamuche. Seek satisfaction only from praising Hari Bhakto. Everything else is useless. And then Swami went on to say, praise, 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 over and over, continue praising. Even if it doesn't fit in your mind, continue praising. It is the most comfortable means. When we don't feel comfortable praising, we think we want to be just and fair. But that is our envy. That is our ego that is getting in the way. It ruins everything. If there, were, if there was no jealousy, 
and no arrogance. There would be no question remaining. Maharaj, Swami, Santo, Bhakto, sing all of their praises. If one does that, one will be fulfilled in every sense. This was Swami's Updesh to all the Santan Hari Bhakto. George Bernard Shaw, a famous playwright of the 20th century, once claimed, There is no sincerer love than the love of food. Clearly, he never had the opportunity to meet the Satpurush. Perhaps if he had, he would see that there is no more sincere love than the Satpurush's love for Bhagwan and Bhagwan na Bhakta. Through Swami Shri's Samagam, may we conquer jealousy and arrogance, become less cynical of Hari Bhakto, and rather be generous in singing the Mahima and praise of our fellow Hari Bhakta. May we rather be suspicious of pleasures from worldly objects. May we direct our cynicism towards food and taste, especially when it leads to lapses in our niyams, forgetting Swami Shri or Kusamp. May we enjoy our moments with food the way Swami Shri does, a way that nourishes our love for Maharaj and Swami, honors our dharma, and fosters Samp in our families and satsang. Jai Swami.